Hello and welcome to the second lineup of nominees for the coveted Golden Crocoduck. Now take a look at these three creationists. One of them is a satirist pretending to be demented and ignorant. The other two are real creationists who don't have to try at all. Can you spot the satirist? The rings of Saturn are expanding at a rapid rate. How come like every planet I've ever seen, including Earth, is round? Yes, it's my sad duty to report that true believer in Jesus has had to withdraw his nomination. It turns out he's not a true believer in Jesus at all. But it shows how hard it is to satirize creationism. No matter how dumb and crazy you try to be, they'll always be dumber and crazier. As a result of true believer coming out of the closet, I've had to quickly re-edit this video. I had started off debunking his ridiculous myth about the rings of Saturn proving that the universe must be very young. But as I said, you can't satirize this stuff without looking just like a real creationist. They do believe Saturn's rings prove that the universe is young. According to David Harris, writing in Answers in Genesis, scientists say the rings must be young because they haven't been blackened by micrometeoroids. One of my creationist fans, N.Y. Clidius, or Euclidius, wrote to say that scientists think the rings are young because they're not well ordered. So let's look at the facts. Astronomers have been puzzling over the rings of Saturn for hundreds of years, and when the Voyager spacecraft got a closer look in the 1970s, the photographs did suggest that the rings were young. The reason was they didn't seem to be covered in enough space dust to be more than a hundred million years old. Anyway, the Voyager spacecraft are ancient history. If answers in Genesis and the creationists who copy from it kept up to date with scientific advances, they'd know that we've discovered a few more things about Saturn's rings in the last 20 or 30 years. Yes, what a surprise. Scientific knowledge advances over time as new evidence comes along. Evidence from the most recent probe, Cassini, shows that the rocks that make up the rings are constantly breaking up, coming together again under gravitational attraction, and then breaking apart again. So the space dust question is irrelevant because dust doesn't easily settle on transient objects. Thanks to this new evidence, a study by the University of Colorado concluded last year that the state of the rings is entirely consistent with their formation at the time of Saturn around 4.5 billion years ago. Even if it weren't, even if they were only formed last week, it makes no difference to the age of our universe, which began around 9 billion years before our solar system was even formed. And it even makes no difference to the age of Saturn. After all, you don't judge the age of a teenager by the age of the pimple on his nose. But let's put this to the test. Here's Saturn. So we rub out the rings and abracadabra, the planet disappears, sort of. So even if we didn't highlight a Golden Crocoduck nominee, at least we've debunked a myth that really is out there. Now on to some surviving nominees. I will now share with you eight simple steps to change your theropod dinosaur into a bird. Breathe, fish. Breathe. If you think there are eight simple steps to turn a theropod into a bird, you might be a redneck. And if you think that's how land animals evolved, you might be a redneck. OK, I get it. It's a joke. Well, if someone really believed that a fish jumped out of water and immediately started breathing, it would be hilarious. Strange and nutty beliefs are always funny. Trouble is, no one actually believes that. The real method by which land animals evolved is fascinating, but, let's face it, not very amusing. And if you believe all dinosaurs were huge, you might be a redneck too, chicken man. Did you see the size of that chicken? Of course, no one has ever suggested birds evolved from Tyrannosaurus rex. Even the whole dinosaur to birds issue is not yet settled. But if they did, they probably evolved from small tree-climbing dinosaurs. Yes, there were tiny dinosaurs, much smaller than some modern birds like chickens and ostriches, and a lot smaller than birds in the past, like this forest wreckers from South America. I know, I'm spoiling the joke. But don't worry, there are still plenty of silly beliefs which can raise a laugh without the need for any changes, distortions or embellishments. This is all a professional comedian like Ricky Gervais has to do. I came across a theory um, that deviates from Darwin's and, uh, and I believe that. It's, I just found it in a dusty old book in a, in a library. It's called The Bible. <laughs> and I don't need to change, distort or embellish anything these guys say to get a laugh. Just roll the tape. And all through the fossil record and life, we don't find one of these. A crocodile. If the theory of evolution was viable, then I should, occasionally, 
by subjecting this to energy, end up having new life. Now we go down to the store, and um, if if I open this jar of peanut butter, maybe not often, but on some occasion, I should find new life inside. Now if you study a well-made banana, you'll find on the far side there are three ridges. On the close side, two ridges. If you get your hand ready to grip a banana, you'll find on the far side there are three grooves, on the close side, two grooves. The banana and the hand are perfectly made one for the other. You'll find the maker of the banana, Almighty God, has made it with a non-slip surface. And truth group, if you don't understand why that's hilariously funny... You might just be a redneck. Now, moving on... Oh, come on, do you really want me to debunk this junk? Well, I suppose this is a debunking channel, so even the stupidest crap has to be shoveled back to the crap heap. I've already dealt with the crocoduck in my video, The Theory of Evolution Made Easy, on the Pothole of 54 channel. We don't find a crocoduck because crocodiles and ducks are on completely different branches of the evolutionary tree. But congratulations, Kirk, your laughable ignorance has made you a contender. I'd be interested to know why Peanut Butter Man thinks we do expect life to suddenly pop out of a jar of peanut butter. If you can't see any difference between the hot mud on the floor of a primordial ocean and a jar of peanut butter, here are a few pointers. The primordial sludge had a wide variety of different chemicals in the mud, in the water and in the atmosphere, most of them simple and easily combined. Here are the contents of a jar of peanut butter. 85% peanuts, but also palm oil, cane sugar and probably a lot of peanut DNA too. Things are looking pretty good for the peanut butter, huh? Ah, but the primordial sludge is a fluid environment allowing limitless chemical interactions. Peanut butter in a jar tends not to move around, so there aren't many chemical interactions. Abiogenesis had the advantage of chemical interactions that took place over the entire surface of the Earth over hundreds of millions of years. The peanut butter jar had only the space inside the jar and the limited time that peanut butter man was watching. And finally, the primordial sludge had at least one catalyst. The jar of peanut butter has none. In fact, if life did suddenly spring out of a jar of peanut butter, it would be a miracle. It would show that there's some magical, powerful force in the universe that defies all the known laws of chemistry and physics. So if you think it should, then I guess you might also believe that people can spontaneously form out of a rib or a lump of clay. And finally, let's debunk this silly banana claim for what it's worth. According to the Australian Banana Growers Council, the bananas we eat today probably originated from two varieties of wild banana. You know, the kind of banana that God made and put into the Garden of Eden. This is what wild bananas look like. The council says the varieties from which cultivated bananas are derived were inedible and chock full of seeds. It took thousands of years of crossbreeding selection and, well, evolution to get to the handy pull-tab nightmare that Ray Comfort is holding in his hand. So congratulations, Ray, for giving us a huge laugh instead of the atheist nightmare you're hereby nominated for a golden crock. That's right, just to show I'm an equal opportunity debunker, I debunk junk science from other religions too. And this one's a doozy. This is Fadel al-Said, who's described during this debate on Iraqi TV as a researcher into astronomy. I don't speak Arabic, so I'm willing to withdraw the nomination if my sources on this have it wrong. But according to the translators... What's the source of this stupendous scientific discovery? A holy book, of course, the Quran. There's so much junk to debunk I've run out of time. More Crocoduck nominees in the next video.